Here's a fun thing I found at my local thrift shop. This is a uh, radio controlled car, a Shelby Mustang GT350. This would be the Mustang from the late 1960s with this ridiculously big engine in it. This car is branded Muscle Machines, and that would seem to be appropriate. And it was manufactured by Funline in 2004. It uses a 27 megahertz analog controller. And all in all, it's a pretty nice looking radio controlled car. It requires six batteries. It has four batteries on top and two underneath. The cover for the batteries is missing. And maybe I'll have to fashion something to cover those. It's fairly big. It's about 28 centimeters front to back. And it comes with this interesting controller that's shaped like a car tire. It has four buttons on it. Now here's the problem. Only one of the buttons works. The other three buttons are doing nothing. Now if we look at the underside of our car, this button causes the car to turn to the right. The left turn and the front and back controls are simply not working. So we need to take this thing apart and see if we can't get it working. Just like the car, the controller is branded Muscle Machines. Since three of the four buttons are bad, I've got to believe that this is a common failure. So there's got to be other people out there with Muscle Machines controllers that are having failing buttons. So perhaps this video can help other people. Okay, so how do we get this thing open? We got to remove the um, battery. We'll start there. And we have our 9 volt battery in there pretty tight. Battery's out. And now we have got three screws. And those will need to come out. Okay, the three screws are out. Put them in our little jar here so we don't lose them. And we can now remove the back. We've got two carrier boards here, each with two buttons on it. And we'll start with this one. Two screws on each board. Those are the two switches right there. When these switches are depressed, it should create a connection from this point to this point. And just to demonstrate that, I've got my ohmmeter connected across those points and I depress the button. And you see our ohmmeter doesn't move. We will desolder one of these switches off the board so that we can get exact measurements. And we will use our soldering iron and solder sucker to do that. Okay, I've gone ahead and removed that solder. And our switch comes out like so. Now with the switch out of the circuit and hooked up directly to our ohmmeter, we can get a better idea what's going on here. It's very intermittent. If I press really hard and kind of move it around, I can kind of... So that switch has clearly gone bad. If we want to order replacement switches, we have to get exact measurements. I've got this old inexpensive plastic micrometer. No machinist would ever use something like this, but this is good enough. A basic approximation of the size of something. And we've got six millimeters by six millimeters. Now, with the button not depressed, we are five millimeters. So we know the switch is six by six by five millimeters. The other important thing is that it has four pins. You can get these in four pin varieties and two pin varieties. So also this is a horizontal switch. They're switches which stand vertically, so you don't want to get those. So with four pins, that's six by six by five millimeters. Here is a typical example of an eBay seller of this type of switch. Fortunately, I happen to have some of these 6x6x5 six six uh, momentary switches on hand. And we'll go ahead and test those. Now, this is what the switches should look like when you hit the button. Notice our ohmmeter deflecting. Those are good switches. Now, we have removed one of our switches. We're going to go ahead and just remove the other three of them. And we're going to go ahead and solder in the new switches. Okay, now I've 
soldered on all four of the new switches. One, two, three, four. Now, one of the switches was good when we tested it initially, but I decided to go ahead and replace all four because if three of the four switches were bad, it kind of means that there's a quality problem in general, and probably the fourth switch was going to fail. So I've got the whole thing open and the switches are pretty cheap. I just decided to go ahead and replace all four of them. Okay, the next step is just to screw these boards back down again. Okay, the two boards have been screwed back into place. Now it's just a matter of putting the lid back on and putting the three screws in that hold it in place, one, two, and three. Okay, I have now put these three screws back in and it's time to pop in the battery. Be sure we get our polarity right. Make sure to get this cord underneath the battery if you ever want to get it out again. Okay, put the connector side in first and then pop it down this way in order to make a good connection. Good. And then we just pop on the lid and screw it down. Okay, back with our nice 350 Shelby Mustang. Let's see how we did. Of course, there's a switch on here to turn the car on. Okay, turn one way and turn the other and forward and reverse great everything's working so our gt350 mustang will live to race again so if you have one of these uh, muscle machine remote controllers and your switches are not responding well you see it's a very easy fix you can just easily Replace those switches. They're inexpensive, they're readily available, and they're easily uh, desoldered and resoldered. And that'll fix your problem.